and else. What do you do when your aircraft is melting? A few thoughts about impossible choices. On occasion, you have to make a choice, and all the options are bad. Sometimes this is because you've gotten yourself into a mess. Other times, the mess finds you. And there are situations when it doesn't really matter. All heck just breaks loose. What do you do when the only choices left are bad ones? Don't stop watching until the end or you'll miss the secret that a NASA test pilot used to survive when all heck broke loose on a record-breaking flight. October 3rd, 1967, Edwards Air Force Base. It was early in the afternoon of October 3rd, 1967, and a B-52 bomber had risen from a runway in the deserts of California. This was not your average B-52. It was still that enormous jet aircraft with a huge wingspan, the one capable of carrying an enormous and devastating load of explosives to pretty much anywhere on the planet. This one, however, wasn't carrying any bombs. This was a NASA-operated B-52B that had another aircraft tucked tightly under its right wing. It was a single-seat experimental aircraft that looked more like a big missile. While still unusual, this sight had been seen almost 200 times. The B-52B lifted the X-15 up to 45,000 feet, leveled off, and then turned it loose. The rocket-like aircraft was not the iconic black. It was white and had two auxiliary tanks filled with hydrogen peroxide fitted to the slender 50-foot-long fuselage, giving it more fuel to burn. This sleek white X-15A2 was released, and moments later, powerful liquid-fueled rocket engines kicked in. And with a trail of flame and smoke shooting out the back, the X-15 went into a 35-degree accelerated climb. I imagine it was kind of like taking a supersonic ride in a long piece of pipe with a 22-foot wingspan. About 60 seconds after the powerful rocket slapped the pilot back into his seat, the fuel was expended. But the ride wasn't over. Having risen to an apex of 102,000 feet, the pilot now had a 10 to 12 minute unpowered glide back to Rogers Dry Lake Bed at Edwards Air Force Base for landing. Deviation from the normal routine. And here is one of the truly unique aspects of the flight. The aircraft had reached a record-breaking Mach 6.72 faster than any other manned aircraft up until then and since. And things on this quick little jaunt just kept being a little out of the routine. On the mostly controlled glide back to Earth, the pilot, William Knight, having achieved this record-breaking speed, deployed the air brakes a bit earlier. Then it was time to jettison the auxiliary fuel tanks. They were so hot they needed to go before the remaining vapor inside the tanks exploded. Then it was time to drop the ramjet. And when he did that, it seemed nothing happened. But with so many other things to do, including keeping the aircraft flying straight and level, there was little he could do about it. So he continued on completing each task in his landing checklist. Because of the increased speed of this flight, Knight's Landing overshot the dry part of the lake bed, and he came to stop in the mud a few miles further along than planned. The aircraft touched down, came to a stop. The ground crew arrived, and Knight noted they didn't immediately come to get him out of the cockpit, which was the normal routine. They all went to the back of the X-15. Once he got out, Knight went back to see what they were looking at for himself. It's melting. At Mach 6.72, or 4,532 miles per hour, interesting things can begin to happen to an airframe. Friction 
from the aircraft shoving itself through the air causes extreme pressure and heat. No biggie, the NASA engineers had built this thing with heat-resistant metals, and the aircraft was designed to withstand enormous pressures. But this time, well, Knight could see, along with the ground crew. The strain and the heat got so severe that the plane had shockingly, while traveling at hypersonic speed, begun to melt. The tail and stabilizers had a few holes burned right through them. Protrusions and leading edges along the craft were blackened, and in some cases, peeling back. And that ramjet that didn't seem to eject? The excessive heat and shockwave ripped it out somewhere before the pilot could eject it. The pilot holding the ramjet in place had melted. A review of the readings and data showed it came off on the way down at about 90,000 feet. It was found 100 miles from the Air Force Base. The airframe, damaged beyond repair, was cleaned up and is on display at a museum. And else, just keep flying. So here's the else. Everybody makes choices. Decisions from the mundane to the life-altering. And sometimes we just can't tell which ones are which. But sometimes we can. Like deciding to be a test pilot. It is an exciting and dangerous job. And every person who chooses that career knows it might, at some point, cost them their life. Other choices in life don't seem so consequential. However, unintended and unforeseen things happen all the time. And in a way, we are all hurtling through mortality to an inevitable end, like a pilot in a melting plane. That end cannot be escaped. It is often not predictable, but it can still be a great flight. Life, we have no idea when the ride ends, and we often don't even realize it's happening. So there's only one useful and logical thing to do. Just like William Knight, while his X-plane was melting away, just keep flying as best we can. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.